So, you've clicked on this video because you've just bought the Grimgrace deck set? Or perhaps you're looking towards decks drifting outside the current meta? Maybe you're looking for a Keter deck that's fairly affordable. Or... I don't know. Here's Grimgrace. It isn't the most flashy or prominent deck within the metagame, but combined with its strong burst potential, multi-attack, a variety of deck building options, Grimgrace has both the tools and abilities to steal and cheese out games. So, as for riding within the set 12 English meta, let's explore one of the most underrated decks of our format. Grimgrace has three key skills, giving Persona Ride power to back row units, drawing cards and enabling back row center swings, and the battle shoved the back row center unit into the soul and draw a card. Grimgrace's deck composition is a bit unique compared to other D format decks. Unlike the conventional kind of ride lines, Grimgrace is in the subcategory of boss units, allowing you to mix and match unit skills that happen in your ride up turns. The deck set array comes with its ride line, draw one, ditch one, soul blast instead of ditching, fairly basic yet it allows you to cycle for your deck early and exchange a hand minus for a resource. An alternative option, and what was run before the Grimgrace deck set was released, is the Blaster Dark Red Lines, using either Wingle and Marin or Fullbound Blaster Javelin. Blaster Dark burns a Counter Blast in a rearguard for an extra drive and a retire, both variations of the Grade 0 Grade 1 foddering for the rearguard cost. Marin calls Wingle from the soul for a guaranteed drive, while Fullbound and Javelin foddering with the top deck call, only to not decrease soul at the chance of being punished. Grade 1, Grade 2 Mabel can also be run in your red line, trading off ride-up skills in exchange for being free bodies later on. Anything that Soul Blast them out will get them going for later turns. You can also run a hybrid of G1 Maple and Divine Sister... Good. Good. Got a... Divine Sister got a bus to Soul Blast G1 Maple and also ride for free. There's also Youth's red line for Nearly Bored and the Genesis red line for an extra soul... But... they're a bit cooked in themselves. While Ground Grace is fairly solid as a main vanguard, the rear guards are what makes this deck shine. Fern Bale is one of the key cards of the deck, and what you'll usually be calling off of Ground Grace's second skill. He's also the enabler of Ground Grace's triple drive, making Ground Grace more threatening both in power and sacking the hell out of your opponent. Last is a consistency booster that allows you to toolbox your soul from turn 3 onwards. By being able to grab any grade free from soul, Last allows you to recycle both Persona Rides, Fern Bale, or any tech cards you choose to include. The new support, the Fin, is an important piece for Gram Grace and serves two main functions, acting as a big beat stick, pushing for 25k minimum by itself, and pumping up both Gram Grace and the unit back row by plus 5k. While not seeming much at face value, the additional power to these units actually makes guarding uncomfortable. Long Shot provides an additional way to pump up numbers on weaker rearguard swings by being able to boost 15k normally and 25k in boost on Persona. To fill the rest of the deck space, Gram Grace thrives on having access to Keter Sanctuary's pool of generic cards. Drilling Angel is a solid option for generating soul. Each turn you'll likely be burning two soul of Gram Grace and Fernbale. And while it is likely that you'll whiff, you'll still open the window of potentially plussing depending on what you soul in. <laughs> Momo Air from Set 8 actually allows for soul foddering in further deck cycle, also enabling your long shell's power gain and boost. Posado is an RG free option to apply pressure with a non hit that refunds resources. And with 13k base power, it can be used to make uncomfortable columns if paired with Monashaw. Just mind that you'll also be running more shieldless cards in the deck if you choose to play Fasado. Finor can also be played to capitalize on a strong early game without having to commit much cards early, although it will start to fall off in later turns. Painkiller from the deck set provides early deck cycling to see key pieces and provide a better early game. However, it may set you up for potential soul problems if you mismanage, or if you're running a red line that uses soul during your first turns. Sign Bluegrass is 13k beat 6 slash booster when active. It makes really good columns at the cost of being... Mm, relatively slow. Yeah, that's about it. Turnar provides resource sustainability for Gram Grace, as you're actively both burning Counter Blast and Soul. Unlike Fasado, it doesn't need to hit the Counter Charge as she shoves herself into Soul as a resource. Why are you up to free face down? <laughs> soul does the cab can further supplement the mid game as an actual plussing engine. Ignore the fact this will add on to the deck out issues, but. <laughs> As if that would actually happen, am I right? Reverence Rush Dragon, finally not only being used for premium only, can combo into Ground Grace's draw and call, like recycling Fern Bales from a drop. It has a similar problem that it's shieldless and vanilla when it's completed situational purpose in life, so you can only really get away with running one or none at all. Topaz can, uh, build board, and it's a 20k shield. Yo, Mystic, who put this cannon here? Kyber either can build an early board or dig for G3 pieces. His only issue is being relatively expensive in the context of the deck, using CB1 Soul Blast 1. And is also pretty expensive in real life. Yeah. Gwendolyn's actually pretty solid into building into the Persona turn at the cost of being slow to commit to the board. Having both power gain and, oh my god, card restrict. 
Oh, the issue is she's like shieldless, but yeah. Suggest is just good. He's not entirely shieldless and opens up harsher numbers for awkward guarding. Being a G3 also means you can also recycle with flash and drilling. The top deck scry actually helps a lot with soul and the trouble drive, so use that to your advantage if you actually run this guy. Sparrow Kitty Angel refunds your red up ditches, but you may run into soul problems or straight incompatibility with the red line. Use that at your own risk, but to be honest, I'm not really gonna stop ya. Oh wait, this guy's actually running spirals. Oh, another thing. The top deck check is actually quite useful too. Capitalizing on the triple drive gives you more of a reason to legally cheat your crits at the top. Gratius Cordale is your fourth Persona ride. Very cool. Its ally does increase soul, but it helps with the Persona consistency. And finally, uh... Wait, wait, wait. What? Okay, okay, okay. Who put this in a screw? The grill gives you more drive checks if you weren't already greedy enough from having free. Because what even is a Cater so Sanctuary over trigger? Yellow. Yeah, let's ignore the fact that you're counterblasting two in a deck that's already tight with it. Yeah, flip the yellow cards, oh get to them in six. Oh my they can't God. do anything if they're already Wait. This is just Fashion Accord. There are also a lot more generic cards that can be run, but we can only cover so many. Because, honestly, this nation has so many cards of potential that could all work if cooked correctly. Other boss units can only wish they had this much to work with. The deck's game plan somewhat shifts depending on how you build Ground Grace, but can adapt to a range of matchup approaches. Wanna rush? Start slapping down cards that trade off themselves, build board, or hit over defensives. Wanna play mid-range? Cycle for your deck for key pieces, capitalize on the magic numbers you produce, and burst down your opponent with persona numbers. Wanna play the long game? Uh, never mind then. Ground Grace can continually keep card advantage through its toolbox, and the skill draw one, superior call, then turn into soul and draw one after battle. I mean, looking at it from a whole, it's a very elaborate way of saying like, soul blast one, counter blast one, draw a card, like, I mean, you're getting the switch. Cards like both maples act as free bodies to add board presence without actually having to commit more. Kyber, Solda, and Drilling, if you somehow don't whiff, are also plus engines for the deck. For what your board would look like, generally you would want at least one Diffin to have your Grand Grace and Fernbale produce 28k, 38k swings each. It's a bit nuanced to whether you should call Fernbale, especially going first, due to being locked to your opponent's Vanguard being grade free, and ultimately is what impacts the deck speed. Everything else is fairly straightforward as you want to build the rest of your columns to hit magic numbers and they will become beefier in Persona turns, the full columns hitting around 40k at minimum. Oh, random thought. Yeah, the triple drive does scream protagonist deck. I mean, it is you- <laughs> Hang on, does this deck filter at all? After everything, you're probably wondering the answer to the question. Is Graham Grace good? Yes. But is it good in a competitive environment? Well... It's not that it's not good, but rather, the problem is it's just not good enough. As of the 2023 BCS season, while the deck has seen a top 8 placement recently at BCS Myanmar, it's not really at a level where it can compete with the upper echelon of top decks, simply because the deck suffers from being too slow before it actually starts popping off. Persona Ride is what ties a deck from becoming amazing and ripping cards out of your opponent's hand, and without it, the deck suffers from hitting like a wet noodle and is more prone to defensives ruining turns. To bring it up again, your triple drive from Fernbale is locked to your opponent's vanguard being grade free, for they're adding to the slow pacing on the deck. Board control cuts Grand Crease's pressure down because of its reliance on board presence. Decks such as Prison, which focus on choking resources, and decks focusing on Retire will force a more conservative playstyle from the Grand Grace player. Ideally, Grand Grace would want to go first in order to Persona as soon as possible. However, Maskus decks will actually turn down Grand Grace's hand faster with the superior Persona ride going second. Moreover, decks that can play for deck out scenarios will take advantage of Grand Grace's fast deck cycling. And finally, decks that skill high into the late game, well, are self-explanatory, since Grand Grace can only barely sustain itself before exploding to either itself or insane numbers. Grand Grace also is too reliant on seeing key pieces, hence why it relies so much on cycling through the deck as much as possible, eventually snowballing into its own deck out issues. But despite all the downsides, the deck is still good enough to work in still games. The sheer numbers it produces on Persona, the sack potential of Triple Drive, a kit for an early game to push for a more lethal Persona, overall is a solid structure for Grand Grace to become at least a reasonable threat. Of course, there are better four swing Keter decks that both outscale, plus more, and have stronger pressure than Grand Grace. But should this stop you from playing Grand Grace? Nah, of course not. Encourage yourself to try new decks, even if they're not a top dog. Here are a few lists to get a head start into building Grand Grace, open to adjustment. First up, we got the generic kind. 
running all the key pieces to make a decent turn 3, turn 4, and probably turn 5 if you somehow live that. Next we have, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, a rush build. Here's where you sacrifice research management for capitalizing on an early game that you can build. Finally, mainly aimed towards new players, we have a budget variant that takes the Grand Grace deck set and a few cheap upgrades. That's all we have for Grand Grace today. If we missed anything, or if you guys have any feedback, please do leave a comment below. Thank you so much for watching, please do leave a like, and if you haven't, please do subscribe to our channel. Peace!